All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Happy Saturday to everyone out there. It is September 30th. We only got a couple more days in the MLB regular season. We got a full slate, actually a doubleheader in this one as well. So a, a larger than full slate in today's MLB world. We're going to jump into each and every game. I'm going to give you my lean or leans on the games. But as always, my final plays, if you do, want to fade me, all of those final plays will be in the pinned comment. Yesterday, yesterday, not the best. We can admit that. Uh, I hate to, to bring graphics like this up, but we do go one and three. Now, the one caveat here is, is uh, I, I told you guys, we got to be careful, right? Heading into the uh, the, the last few day, days of the MLB season and things get weird. Guys sit, they don't play as hard as they would if they already have a playoff spot, yada, 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 right? And then my dumb, you know what, goes in here and takes three of my four picks, three of my four picks as plus money plays. I uh, tried to big brain sort of these opportunities here and uh, uh, unfortunate there. And speaking of, uh, I guess, things that are unfortunate, our ride of the day also does not come through. Coming in from Samuel here, he had Brandon Belt over one and a half hits for five plus 500 odds. I'm not dropping the womp womp one because we just dropped it on ourselves, but two, Brandon Belt hit a home run. Like, if we took his total bases, he cashes. He had one hit, and it was a home run. So this was obviously a good spot, a good spot for Brandon Belt. The guy was feeling it. He goes deep. It just happened to be his only hit of the game. So um, shout out to Samuel Adams, 5-2-4-3 here for the uh, ride of the day. Unfortunately, it does not come through. He avoids the womp womp because I feel like a home run kind of warrants you. And, okay, well, it wasn't a, a bad play, right? It just didn't come through for us. And I just dropped the womp womp by myself. But, guys, if you do want to be the ride of the day and get a shout-out in the next video, all you got to do is use the hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Give me an absolute banger of a player prop, and I'll be jumping on board with one person's pick and uh, letting you guys know that I'm riding with you, and you get a shout-out in tomorrow's video. So drop your plays in the comments. Usually, if you lose, you got to face the womp womp. But today, I took the owner of the Womp Womp Out. Guys, before we do get into today's slate, I do want to shout out the Fade Me brand. I'm wearing the Fade Me Athletics collection as of right now, but we have tons of cool products over on the store and tons coming as we progress through the football season and everything like that as well. We just had a new uh, Guppy Crossout uh, tee and hoodie launch in multiple different colors, but this is a really cool, simple design. We're working on um, how to get it to come to hats and, and fruition on the hats pretty soon because I think that'd be a really cool app but if you guys do want to support what we're doing here go pick up some merch you can use the link in the pinned comment guys and right now you can get 20 percent off using the code week four so w-e-e-k four that's through the football weekend here so up until monday night football kickoff week four we'll get you 20 percent off it's a great way to support what we're doing here great way to support the show and the channel and just support me in general so head over consider picking up some fade me merch now let's go ahead and jump into game number one now it's a Saturday, and we're still up super early. A lot of these lines aren't even out. A lot of teams aren't saying who's pitching, which makes sense. It's early in the morning. That happens during the, the you know middle of the regular season, right? But even now, at the end of the year, things a little wonky. Uh, you know, we're missing some stuff. So apologies if we're just kind of you know hypothesizing about some games here, even games that do have totals and lines right now. Their pitchers aren't confirmed. So we're gonna do our best to talk about it. Um, I figured you guys would still appreciate videos, which I pre appreciate making the videos even if, uh, you know, we don't have all of the details. It'd be easy to be like, all right, we're just not going to do a video today because we're waiting on a bunch of stuff. It's like, no, I still want to I still want to um, pump out the content because you guys know that that is something that we do. I think in the last two weeks, 36 videos. Huh? Who's doing that? Who, and, and add on YouTube shorts, we're at like 50, so yikes. Um, but I love it, guys. You guys you guys help me love it. But let's jump into this game before we do start shedding a tear. Um, but first, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop your ride of the day in the comments, and let's jump in. We got Detroit taking on Cleveland here. Cleveland pulls out the 7-5 to five victory yesterday. Uh, we did like that spot. We also like the under. That does not come through. Uh, right now, we don't have any sort of a total or line uh, on the mound for the Cleveland Guardians. Here's going to be Tristan McKenzie, who uh, hasn't looked all that great very very inconsistent on the year we don't know who's pitching for Detroit just yet um I wouldn't be surprised if 
Uh, we see someone uh, of the likes of, um, I'm, I'm assuming, um, someone that really doesn't matter all that much to their team as they are out of it. And maybe they're going to try and get some some young, young arms trying, someone, uh, something like that. So uh, keep an eye on any sort of updates on this game. I will say I lean towards Cleveland on the money line, depending on what that comes out to be. Yesterday, they were a, pretty much a pick em, um, which I like the spot for them. I still do think that they are uh, the uh, the better team in, in this conversation here. Neither one of which are worried about playoff implications. So uh, you never really know the effort that you're going to get. If we have a total anywhere around what it was yesterday, eight and a half, I still do like the under. Neither one of these offenses uh, is crushing it, okay? Um, and we're looking, obviously, uh, at, at, a, at a team which we don't know who's pitching for Detroit, so we have to kind of just look at their numbers regardless of left or right. Um, but, you know, both these teams' uh, offenses have struggled as of late. So I'll take the under here as well. But obviously, we want to know what those lines are. Let's move on to the next game. All right, Toronto taking on Tampa Bay. Toronto standing strong here. They've won two games in a row. They blow out Tampa Bay yesterday, 11-4. to four. In terms of who is pitching today, we do not have um, confirmed starters here. Looks like Ryu and Armstrong are the probable starters, but even when you look on different sites and stuff like that, um, they don't even end up saying that those guys are confirmed. So uh, we'll assume that those are the starters. Right now, Toronto is sitting at minus 106 on the money line. Total is sitting at nine. Um, and again, assuming that those guys are the starters, I still do like uh, Toronto in this spot. They should be pretty good when it comes to uh, their playoff standings. Um, but, you know, another win here and there and tomorrow doesn't really hurt the cause. They are a game up um, in the wild card here. Right now, Tampa Bay, uh, they're good to go. And then Toronto and Houston, uh, you know, they could be on somewhat of thin ice. Right now, Houston, I believe, is a game up on Seattle, which is crazy because I think Seattle has the, the tiebreaker over Houston, if I'm not mistaken. And even Texas, who's in the, um, in the driver's in that at that uh, division is only one game up, I believe, on Houston. So uh, yes, there's only a couple games left, but still a couple implica uh, implications in that AL West division. But nonetheless, Toronto uh, sitting in a decent spot. They pretty much just have to not crap the bed and a couple other things not happen, and they do make the playoffs here. But I still think that they're going to be looking to get some wins. So I'll lean slightly towards Toronto here. Um, especially for the better money at minus 105 over on bet MGM right now, Tampa Bay is minus 110 on FanDuel. So you get a little bit of a price, um, you know, I guess price bump there in terms of them being underdogs in terms of the total it's at nine runs i still like the over in this one we saw a high scoring game yesterday i think that that's kind of what this game's going to turn into as well keep an eye on the pin comment guys obviously we want to know who's pitching and everything like that before we do end up pulling the trigger on something but that's where we're leaning as of right now all right, Mets taking on the Phillies. We do not have any um, odds or total for this. We do have for the second part of this double header here. This got po uh, postponed yesterday. Almost had a bad stutter there. Um, I don't really love anything in this, especially not knowing who is pitching. Uh, we don't know who's pitching in either one of these games, but we do have odds for the second game. So again... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apologize and mention it multiple times in this video. We are missing a lot of information from this slate. Uh, I do think the Phillies are the better team, but if you guys watch uh, every day, or at least, you know, you're a real one, you do know that I don't love doubleheaders um, because, you know, guys can sit in different things and different levels of intensity. Now you throw in the fact that this is the second to last day of the MLB season, and you're like, wait a second, wait a second. I don't like doubleheaders to begin with because guys are sitting and all that. This is a whole nother factor. So uh, it seems like a, um, a chance to step in dog doo-doo uh, betting on either one of these doubleheaders. But I still think the Phillies are the better team for both games. I probably lean them on the money line, not knowing exactly what the odds are, especially for this top, uh, you know, first game here. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to know the pitchers before I walk into that mess. All right, Pittsburgh hosting Miami. Miami doing their best, and they seem to have some success right now doing it, um, holding on to that last wild card spot with yesterday's win and the Chicago Cubs' loss. Uh, they do end up, uh, you know, now a game and a half above the Chicago Cubs there in that last NL wild card spot. In terms of who's on the mound today, uh, again, these are not confirmed yet, but we have Quinn Priester uh, slated to go for Pittsburgh, and then JT Chagios on the mound for uh, Miami here. I like Miami again in this spot. You are paying a decent price for them though minus 148 is your best bet here over on DraftKings but I like their spot I think they want to solidify what they have going on here um, in terms of their playoff spot and the, the Pirates don't really seem to be into it anymore maybe once they realize okay well we're not making the playoffs they kind of turn down a little bit because they've lost four of their last five games um, they kept it close yesterday uh, but nonetheless Miami just clearly wants it more and and I hope that Miami keeps that intensity because I think that's another lock today in terms of uh, you know them winning but that being said they could get a little comfortable because 
because being a game up with only a couple games left, um, game and a half up with only a couple games left gives them a little bit of, it shouldn't, but it may give them a little bit of uh, comfortability and contentness uh, in their spot here. In terms of the total nine runs, I still like the under again. Those pitchers aren't confirmed, but regardless, I don't think um, that, you know, anyone's hooting and hollering about these two offenses. Uh, they've looked good as of late for average, but not scoring all that many runs. So uh, I like the under ever so slightly. Uh, the only argument you can make would be what I just said, and I'm kind of getting ahead of it, that, well, they're batting well for average over the last 10, last five, however you want to look at it, but still only averaging um, about, you know, three point x amount of of runs per per game here so uh, i'll slightly take the under as well uh, but miami money line definitely trumps that and if we had to rank these leans in this game all right i know i'm up early but are you sleeping are you sleeping because you better be guys go check out sleeper my favorite pick them app out there as of right now all you have to do is come uh, you know combine two to eight players in a slip the more you get right in terms of the projection you pick the more you get paid out and they're giving you 100 of your first deposit matched if you use the link in my pinned comment there that link also directly supports me so another way to support me and what we're doing here making better content but you can also just get the sleeper app and use code guy boston when when depositing first, um, you're going to get a deposit match up to a hundred bucks. You can literally put in a hundred bucks and sleeper is going to go deep into their pocket and say, here's a hundred X dollars, Jonathan. All right. You know, here's another hundred bucks and you'll have a new account balance of 200, kind of a no brainer. And it's up to a hundred. You could put in 20 bucks if you want and you guys would get 20 bucks matched. But uh, yeah, go check out sleeper guys. I really do love the way that they do things. The uniqueness about them is the fact that each and every prop has its own multiplier compared to, uh, you know, on a lot of other sites out there, like the prize or underdogs of the world that each and every prop has the same odds in a sense and, and the payout is fixed. Uh, Sleeper actually you can win up to 100 times. So it's really, really cool, guys. Um, they do things a little bit differently over there. Go check it out. I'm using Sleeper literally every single day. And you'd know that if you're following me on Twitter at FGuyBoston or on TikTok at FPix3.0. Let's get back to Slate again. That link is in the pinned common here we're looking at the boston red sox taking on the baltimore orioles and i wish i bet this one yesterday what i tell you yesterday is that i think the red sox at least squeeze one out here before the end of the season against this team they have two more games obviously um but i had a feeling yesterday that that was the game and nick pavetta pitched really well seven innings pitched here for him they ended up shutting out the orioles three nothing but i do think that this is a spot in which um, baltimore probably bounces back a little bit they have kyle gibson on the mound who if you look at his stats from a last five perspective they don't look all that great um he's got a three flat ERA um, in his last five year uh, in terms of strikeouts only averaging 3.6 but that is due to a seven earned run or four innings game and it's his fifth most recent start so it's just about to come off of the books when looking at it from a last five perspective you look at him from a last three perspective looks a little bit better here 13 strikeouts over his last three 2.45 ERA and a near flat one whip here at 1.04 so I do think that Kyle Gibson is um, you know the better pitcher in this matchup as he takes on Cutter Crawford that uh, Cutter Crawford just has kind of been all over the place he's getting a lot of strikeouts um and i do think that this is a spot in which he could probably strike out uh, a few orioles here today so i don't hate it if you're looking at strikeouts but uh, other than that i'm not really taking a peek at the red sox i don't think they pull two out against this team um i don't think that it's going to be a very high scoring game either right now the totals at eight and a half uh we've seen this red sox team in three games now uh have a total of three runs scored yes and they scored three runs yesterday they had two shutouts uh before that and same thing with baltimore here they actually have scored two or less runs in three of their last last four games here so i'll take the under eight and a half as well as jumping back on baltimore side of things in terms of the money line and i'm a red sox fan so you know if i'm leaning baltimore i must really feel it because i'm not being biased whatsoever against the hometown team but yeah you can get this at eight and a half over on FanDuel right now it was at eight on some sports books as well so i like that i think sports books are moving in a direction that's a little bit favorable for us but uh, yeah keep an eye on the pin comment to see what we pull the trigger on finally a game in which we kind of have all of the starters the pitchers and all that feels good to talk about a game uh, uh, in some form uh, form of normalcy. All right, Brewers taking on the Cubs here. Milwaukee, we don't know who's starting for them just yet, but on the mound for the Cubs is going to be Jordan Wicks. Uh, he started off his first few starts here on the year fairly well and kind of let it slip against Arizona and then against Colorado. Not even two really good teams, which is kind of um, tough to see, but I think that they do bounce back today. They're plus 114 over on FanDuel uh, is your best money right now. I do like the spot. They kind of let us down yesterday uh, in a big way, and they're letting their season down as well. They really need uh, to pretty much win their next couple games here to even have a chance at the playoffs. So, uh, you know, it's not up a shot up time for the Chicago Cubbies, um, and I think that 
they actually, you know, try and, and, and put everything into this game because tomorrow's game most likely won't matter if they don't win this game. So give me them with their backs against the wall. Unfortunately, I don't love um, what we've seen out of them as of late. Uh, they've scored three runs in their last two games here. The offense hasn't looked all that bad, but if you look at their runs allowed, it doesn't matter if they have steel pitching or Strowman. Like, they're letting up a minimum of, you know, four or five runs right now, and that's a minimum. So it is tough to see that. They do have steel going tomorrow, so uh, hopefully Wicks can go out there, pitch well today. Uh, at least he's the probable pitcher as of right now, and then Steele can, uh, you know, make this thing interesting tomorrow because uh, covering, you know, the MLB every single day like this uh, and the NFL, go watch those videos. I do want some entertaining baseball, right? As as selfish as it is, like, we want some, like, heart pounding, like, oh, it's coming down to the wire type stuff. Any fan would, especially if I'm having to talk about every single game every single day. Give me some juice, Chicago. Um, I do think that has a chance to be a final play today because uh, maybe I'm dumb for reading into the narrative, but, like, they gotta do it, right? Like, if they want to even sniff the playoffs and give themselves a chance, like, if Miami just continues to win as well, then it, it won't even matter because they're not going to gain any ground. But what they're hoping for is Miami to drop a couple, Cubs to win a couple, and then we get a little bit interesting in here, right? Um, but I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, even being a game and a half out, I don't know how probable or even possible that is. Um, not the uh, the playoff math guy, you know, not 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 the best at that. But uh, make it interesting, Chicago. In terms of the total, we're sitting at nine runs right now. Uh, I would say under but I think Chicago's gonna have to score like five runs today to, to win this game. So uh, I'm gonna fade my initial thoughts here and initial research and go with a slight lean towards the over, but I could totally see this being a five, four type of game landing on that number. So if you can get it at eight and a half, uh, maybe I'm a little bit more comfortable with that, but Cubs money line, my main lean in this game. All right, we're skipping the Mets-Phillies game. I already talked about that in game number one. I feel the same way. We do, We have a lot of question marks, but I think the Phillies are the better team for whatever that is worth. Um, no real playoff implications in that spot either as the Phillies are in as a wild card team here and the Mets stink, uh, simply put. But uh, we got New York taking on the Royals here. Uh, Royals won 12-5 to yesterday. Uh, going up on the mound for them today, we did have it, uh, but it's now been pulled down. I think it was Steven Cruz, if I'm not mistaken, but not seeing him as listed as like the confirmed uh, pitcher anymore. Clark Schmidt on the mound for the Yankees. He is listed as the probable pitcher. Again, all these are kind of probabilities. Um, but in terms of what we're looking at here, I think the Yankees, uh, you know, win this one. I don't think they dropped two to Kansas City, but we've heard that same song and dance before, right? And those are better teams we were talking about that Kansas City was beating. So I'll take the Yankees on the money line. In terms of the total nine runs, I don't hate it. If Kansas City's offense is going to put up 12 runs and then maybe they put up a bunch of runs again um, today, uh, I like the spot for an over here. We've seen this New York offense not necessarily stink. Uh, they had a zero run game against Toronto, but if you look at it from the last three perspective, six runs scored, zero runs scored. That's the bad one. And then five runs scored. If they can go out there and give you that. I think Kansas City carries their weight to some degree and we end up looking at uh, an over here now. Do I wish this was eight and a half? Of course, um, I think that, you know, that is a better number because, again, this is a game that wouldn't be surprised if it gets to nine runs and stays there, but I'll slightly lean towards the over nonetheless. Chicago, Chicago, you let me down yesterday. I took one last swing at Dylan Cease. He didn't pitch poorly, I guess you could say. Um, in terms of what he did, he went out there five innings, pitched seven strikeouts, uh, four hits allowed, only one earned run. So he did his job, but unfortunately... The bullpen blows it, and San Diego wins that one 3-2. to two. In terms of who's on the mound today, Clevenger on the mound for the White Sox. I've definitely had some strong words about not trusting him or anything like that. He's going up against Michael Waka. I do think that Clevenger has been pitching fairly well as of late, and in terms of what we're looking at from an offensive perspective, both these teams uh, have kind of struggled in their last five years. Chicago batting 195 against righties, San Diego batting 216. So I think my initial lean in this spot is going to be taking a peek at the under, but uh, I don't want to pay the minus 154 for Chicago uh, for the uh, the Padres here. So this may be a, a lean again towards the White Sox after plus one, uh, 136, which uh, I don't know if I can do it two days in a row, probably just giving away money and donating to the books, but I don't hate the under eight and a half here. That is that is for sure. So we'll leave that as our main lean in this game, but I'm kind of tempted by that number for Chicago. I don't I don't think that the San Diego team is, is miraculous. Now they've been playing really well um, and we've talked about that. They haven't been totally tested, um, but I think that this could be a, a spot in which we, we see a little bit of value on two teams that don't really matter for the playoffs right now, uh, maybe taking that, that younger and, uh, you know, more plus money team. Keep an eye on the pin comment.
right, St. Louis taking on Seattle, Seattle, St. Louis taking on Cincinnati here. Cincinnati most likely out of the playoffs as well. Kind of the same thing as the Cubs. Like they would need earth, wind and water to all form into one uh, for this thing to happen. Um, they win yesterday in 19 to two. Uh, I like this spot for them again today. It just kind of stinks because I'm like, are they, are they going to win that big yet again? Like we, we liked them yesterday. In fact, we, we liked a lot of our leans yesterday. Didn't make them final plays. And then our final plays just womp womped it up you know what i mean so uh, it's tough when your leans are are better than your plays but sometimes in the sports betting world that is what it is um, but give me cincinnati again today uh this isn't a st louis team that i'm even remotely fearful of and in the last 10 here cincinnati crushing lefties betting 316 against lefties compared to seattle uh, st louis i keep saying seattle st louis batting righties at 195 in their last 10 and it gets even bigger of a discrepancy in their last five year cincinnati against lefties in their last five averaging 19.3 runs per nine which no kidding they have a couple outliers in there okay we get it yesterday type of thing but um 462 average with a 500 on base percentage compared to a whopping 175 average 273 on base percentage for the st louis cardinals didn't say seattle that time uh give me cincinnati here on the money line in terms of the odds that we're looking at uh not too poor either minus 118 i think that that is a, a good price tag for this game in terms of a total uh we're looking at nine i've seen it nine and a half on some sports books as well i like the over but uh, i don't think cincinnati's gonna go out there and drop 19 runs again so it makes me a little scared of a total that high so i'm gonna stick with cincinnati on the money line in terms of leans in this game all right, Seattle taking on Texas. You, you can't knock Seattle for trying here. Um, right now, they're sitting a game back of Houston. Houston playing um, Arizona as well. Not the easiest of series, uh, you know, no for them. They did get the big win yesterday. They dropped game one of uh, game two of that series no that was game one of that series so yeah duh um so this is sort of some serious implications uh here as well seattle pitching luis castillo i think that they know uh you know they need this one going up against um andrew haney here i think seattle gets the win they are they were banned i should say were but uh you know texas they they need to start winning games too but I said it yesterday. I was like, I think Texas is going to be hungry to kind of stand their ground. Seattle looks hungry here. They've won two straight games here against Texas, 3-2 and 8-0. Um, they have their best pitcher on the mound today. So do I want Texas to win? Yes. Do I think Seattle looks hungry and looks like they're determined to at least give themselves and put themselves in the conversation? Yes. So I hate to do it. It, it skeeves me out. But I'll look at the Seattle Mariners here on the money line. Total sitting at 7.5. If we just have Texas's offense show up, I do think that this one hits the over. Over. Um, the only un unfortunate thing here is Luis Castillo, who is obviously a good pitcher, is on the mound for Seattle. And, and can Texas get to him? We hope so. Um, but, you know, even if not, I do like Seattle on the money line. So if he goes out the pitches at gem, our, our primary lean in this game looks pretty good. But, yeah, keep an eye on the pincom. This is such a good this, – this division is setting up for a really good sort of, um, you know, into the playoffs and even playoffs um, in general. You know, right now Texas 89 and 71 in terms of uh, their record going up or you know facing um houston who's 88 and 72 and seattle who's 87 and 73 like all these games all these teams are a few games within each other one's in the the division lead right now one has the last playoff spot and then seattle's right in there trying to get in knocking on the door so really really cool sort of situation that we have at hand here Speaking of cool situation, uh, this one isn't it. Uh, Spencer Strider takes on the Washington Nationals today. Washington does get the win yesterday, but uh, I think that this is going to be a nice little tune-up spot for Spencer Strider. He's been a little erratic as of late, if we're being honest. Now, the team's 4-1 and one when he pitches, but I feel like I could have a team winning record it's not his wins right it's the team's record when he pitches um i could have a winning record when pitching for the atlanta braves because uh, he's been letting up a decent amount of runs over his last five games here 3.6 era um but the 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 braves are just averaging a bunch of runs which is no surprise there whatsoever right in terms of the last three it's a 3.66 era with a 0.92 whip so he's letting up these deep balls one it's not like there's many guys even um on base not walking a lot of guys uh just a lot of uh you know he's let up four home runs over his last five games so uh, he's letting the meatballs cross the plate i think this is a tune-up game from uh brewers are heavily juiced so we won't we won't find me betting on that individually i could throw it into some sort of a parlay in terms of the total it's sitting at nine runs um I'll take the over here. I look at this as a tune-up spot for the Braves overall these next couple games, to be honest. Um, so, you know, they, they might go up there and have some batting practice. So give me the over in this spot as well. 
All right, Arizona taking on Houston, and you can tell that they won it. Uh, looks like Justin Verlander is going to go again today. He just pitched two days ago, three days ago, something like that. So he is, I mean, the probable starter here. Anything changes at this point in the MLB season, which we should have a counter of how many times I'm going to mention that because you guys are probably like, Ev, we get it. Things change. It's not confirmed, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, whatever. Uh, Verlander on the mound. In terms of who's on the mound for Arizona, we are looking at, um, it was, uh, I think it was Merrill Kelly, um, not seeing him listed as the probable starter anymore, but uh, they could just be kind of, you know, fixing it or, or figuring it out. Um, I like Houston in this spot. I think that they know just just as well as uh, the rest of the league, the implications of that um, sort of situation. And they're even odds right now over on BetMGM with Verlander on the mound. Uh, I like the sort of, I, I mentioned it yesterday, but I like that nut up or shut up type of spot. Like Verlander, the vet here, um, coming out and, and pitching, I think, what was it, four days ago maybe he pitched? Uh, whatever it ended up being. I think it was, you know, four days ago, something like that. Um, and him coming out maybe, maybe a day too early or so and saying, all right, let's go out there and win this game. Like, I like the idea uh, of that for sure. So um, give me the Astros on mound. I know I said I think he pitched two days ago, but I think it was I think it was more like um, against the, the Seattle. So that would have been our first game in Seattle. So whatever you got, you guys can fact check me. I think it was either three or four actual days ago. Never mind games. Um, give me them on the money line plus 100. I like the idea of them saying, let's go in here, determine putting one of our best arms in the conversation. Um, and I'm assuming they could even, you know, consider depending on where they are uh, for Amber Valdez at some point, if they need a win uh, tomorrow as well but hopefully they win this game they're putting themselves in a situation where they don't need that and Valdez is good to go for the playoffs obviously um, in terms of the total nine runs here uh, I don't like much on it we've seen Houston kind of have big scoring games low scoring games big scoring games low scoring games I don't want to bet on that right now but what I can say is that other than that 15 run game for Arizona against the White Sox their offense has been fairly dormant over the past week or so so maybe I lean towards the under but again uh, you can never really see you don't really know what you're getting it's like a bucket of chocolates when you're looking at this Houston an offense right now but i'll trust verlander give me them on the money line for even odds all right, a few, I could be honest, snooze fest games to close out the video, but if you're still watching right now, make sure to go ahead and comment 26 as we're just crossing the 26 minute mark and let me know what team you're most excited, or I should say this, what matchup you're most excited to watch in the playoffs. We have a couple games left, obviously, in the regular season, but what is sort of that first matchup, or it could be anything, like who do you want to see in the World Series, ALCS, you know what I mean, that type of thing, like like what are you excited to see in this playoffs um, for the MLB here? I think I'm kind of, like honestly excited to see how that AL West shakes out like that is my number one um, sort of entertainment of the MLB right now like that's a really cool situation I don't know if it's going to shift from what it is as of right now but uh, there is a chance that it does which is really cool to kind of follow so that is what I'm excited about heading into the playoffs here um, let me know what you guys are excited about go ahead and comment 26 if you are still watching right now um, but again I'll be honest a couple snooze fests here to close out the, uh, the video we don't have any odds or anything like this but Minnesota probably going to be heavy juiced favorites over um, the Colorado Rockies here. They're minus 190 yesterday. They get the win. Uh, no surprise there. I lean that way again today. We don't know who's pitching. Probably not anyone that important, but nonetheless, I do like that spot for them. Um, and in terms of a total, if it is going to be way up there, I'm going to lean towards the under yet again. Similar sort of storyline here. I think that this is going to be a spot where the Dodgers are heavily juiced. Um, Clayton Kershaw is the probable pitcher right now, going up against Tristan Beck, who just pitches, you know, two innings for them, gets out of there. He's kind of an opener for San Francisco. Give me the Dodgers here. If we can get any sort of good price tag, like I'm talking, I think I saw minus 170 on Caesars. It actually could be a final play, but where's the intensity going to come from, right? Like, like why does this Dodgers team really need to go out there um, and win? They don't, right? And, and the fact that Kershaw, you know, you probably can't even expect a full allotment of of innings or anything from him either so uh, i'll lean towards the dodgers um total sitting at eight runs right now i like the over as well but i don't think that'll be a final play and referring to things not being a final play, I can pretty much guarantee nothing in this game is going to be a final play. Right now, we have no line, no total, anything like that. But uh, like you could even you know put a, a, a money gun to my head and be like, I'll pull the trigger if you don't make a final play. And I'd be like, shoot me with the money because I don't know what the hell this game is going to entail. The Angels uh, did like, you know, I, I guess they bounced back yesterday, five to one. Oakland, big underdogs. If they're big underdogs, I lean that way again. But guys, you got to understand that. If I'm telling you I don't really like a game, if I end up saying, well, gun to my head, I lean this way, like, 
you got to understand the, the context of that, right? Like, I don't love anything about this. I'm barely giving my take on it. Uh, just sort of like a last ditch effort to give a take. But uh, yeah, that is going to wrap it up. Uh, it's pretty crazy that we're, we're already at the end of the MLB season. This is our first full MLB season on the channel. Obviously, we had some MLB videos here and there last year, but tons of new subscribers this year. Thank you guys so much. Like, like uh, seriously. It, this has been channel changing, you know, life changing, brand changing, everything. So uh, this MLB season, you know, really, really catapulted us into the uh, NFL season. And uh, yeah, cannot be more thankful for that. So shout out to you guys. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure to do so. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. All right. Peace out.